all for the College World Series. These are our Saturday coaches. And uh, we remind you once again, if you came in with a, a cell phone, please turn it off or at least put it on moot. Um, no video in this room, no flash photography in this room. You can get the uh, interviews and everything off the FTP site. Once again, uh, like I say, welcome to Omaha for the College World Series, and we'll have our coaches here. Mike, I hate to say it, but they, they've asked to take hats off. I'm getting ready to take it off. Okay. <laughs> he got on me three years ago, and he's on me again this year. <laughs> Jesse, came up and, Jesse came up and told me he's bigger than both of us, so. Uh, first of all, Eric Backich is the head coach at the University of Michigan. Uh, Kurt Svoboda, raise your hand so they can see you. There he is. Uh, Michigan 46 and 20 this year. They won the Corvallis Regional and then defeated UCLA two games to one in the Super Regional. Tim Tadlock, uh, his SID is Ty Parker. Ty, there he is. Uh, Tech 44 and 18. They're the number eight national seed. Uh, won the Lubbock Regional and then defeated Oklahoma State two games to one in their Super Regional. Mike Martin, head coach at Florida State. Stephen McCartney, where are you, Stephen? Well, that's who you are. Uh, 41 and 21 this year. They won the Athens Regional and then defeated L LSU two games to none in the Super Regional down in Baton Rouge. And Dave Van Horn, uh, John Thomas, raise your hand. Okay, way back. Uh, Arkansas, 46 and 18 on the year. They're number five national seed. Won regional in Fayetteville, and then defeated Ole Miss two games to one in their Super. Uh, we'll start off with a comment from each of the coaches, and then we'll open it up for questions. When we open it up for questions, please uh, be recognized. Uh, Jessica and Suzanne will get a mic to you and identify yourself to whom you're asking the question and your affiliation. Eric, start us off, please. Thanks, Bill. Uh, it's an honor to be sitting up here with, with these three coaches as a young head coach. And I admire three Hall of Fame coaches and, and none more than the greatest of all time in Coach Martin. So just to, to be up here at the table with them is uh, something I'll never forget. And uh, certainly appreciate it and, and, and don't take it for granted. Uh, our program hasn't been here before in 35 years. Uh, we haven't navigated our way through the postseason, so we needed to catch lightning in a bottle, which we did uh, with a walk-off win in the Big Ten tournament. We were one strike away from our season being over. And uh, that win just did so much for our players' confidence, our belief, and uh, just sparked a hot streak. And it's been different ever since. We've sort of caught fire, and that's what we needed. We needed an, an authentic organic moment to happen on the field since we hadn't done it before and that's what you want as a as a coach with a program who hasn't done it you do all this work and preparation and training and all this investment of time to hope that you get hot at the end and so fortunately we have and our players uh, have been confident ever since and hasn't been perfect we uh, lost a championship game uh, in the regional blew a ninth inning lead and got back up and came back to win the next game Lost the middle game in the Super Regional, made five errors and walked 10, but our guys got back up. So they were unfazed and you know, you know, really proud of how they fought. And just getting to this, to this particular stage is a huge accomplishment for Michigan, for the Big Ten. So we're certainly fired up to be here. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Uh, good to see everybody. Always good to be back in Omaha. Uh, congratulations to Eric and his staff and University of Michigan and obviously Coach Martin and Florida State. Uh, sure, we'll all talk about him plenty. I'm pretty sure this press conference, he could hold it. and We should just probably let him hold it. Congratulations to Coach Van Horn in Arkansas. All these guys got a lot of admiration for all these guys and their programs. And uh, I was fortunate enough to watch a few games there on Monday. Uh, that was a lot of fun. We got to do a little bit what you guys do, just kind of be a fan and uh, had the TV on and watch some baseball. It's always fun. Our team, um, you know, we went through the regional um, at home. Uh, you know, it was a uh, real hard-fought hard re regional. I think 
we ended up uh, playing Dallas Baptist in the championship game, won, I think, three to nothing. And uh, Oklahoma State came in for the Super Regional. That was, uh, quite honestly, that was, uh, it was a grind. It was a heck of a series, as most of you guys saw. Uh, anytime you tee it up against a conference opponent, uh, within a league like ours for the second time for three games with Omaha on the line and everybody knows everything about each other. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun, but at the same time, there was uh, a lot of respect on both sides and a really well-played series. And our guys are ecstatic about being in Omaha. They don't take it for granted that we're here. Uh, they love this game. They love to play, and they're excited about it. Mike. I honestly don't <clears throat> excuse me. It was that hamburger. <laughs> I really don't know where to start because we're very, very fortunate to be here. It was a year of ups and downs. But I did learn a lot this year that it is amazing how far our program can go when I stay out of it. And I did a good job of that, guys. These young men battled when things were not going well. And I really think the key to the season was when the guys that had been out here in 17 had a little meeting and kind of explained to the guys that, uh, well, we're in San Quentin, we're in jail. If we don't turn this thing around, we're not even going to get to a regional. And their experience permeated our young men. And all of a sudden, an era was a big deal, but yet there was none of this drop in their head. There wasn't any of these pictures that would give you a little body language that would indicate they weren't real happy with what they were seeing it turned into a real team. These young men deserve all the credit for getting us back to Omaha. I can't say enough about our coaching staff. They really just jumped right in on all of this with the players, and it turned out to be that we got it done in the end. And it makes all of us proud to be here and I can't tell you what it means to be sitting up here with these three outstanding coaches. I got stories about every single one of them because baseball is a fraternity. Baseball coaches have their own fraternity. And I'm proud to be a part of it. And I'm certainly excited to be back in the great city of Omaha, Nebraska. Dave. Well, you know, just humbled to be back, honestly. You know, sitting up here, it's always such an honor. You're sitting next to coaches that have been through the same grind that, that you have personally to get here. I um, have respect for all these guys. I've known Eric since he was assistant at, at, at Vandy, and he used to – I was really impressed at how strong he was because he hit fungo with one hand. I mean, it was amazing. <laughs> You know, I'll never forget that. It was really impressive. And uh, I've known Tim forever. I mean, just we were, we were junior college coaches in Texas and just kind of, you know, worked our way through it and uh, fortunate enough to be here. And then Coach Martin, run into him a few times as a graduate assistant coach a long time ago and then uh, a couple of times in, in some super regionals and just admired him for a long time. You know, just talking about our team, and it's been a, you know, it's a team that uh, we got together in the fall and we started fall ball. I didn't know, I didn't really know where we were or how, we, how it was going to, how the season was going to, you know, end up because we, we had to replace a lot of players offensively, a couple of starters on the weekend, and, uh, you know, we were going to rely on some backups from last year and a couple of transfers and, even even a player that we sent to summer ball didn't even get to travel to Omaha with his last year. You know, those are the guys we're going to have to that we were going to live with all year. And uh, it's been it's been a real special year because I think that 
they all just stepped up to the challenge. And, and I watched guys get better all year. We had a couple of series that I think uh, really, in my mind, separated us from some other teams. Uh, you know, coming back and winning a 15-inning ball game on the road in conference. Second game of a doubleheader due to weather that uh, we let the first game slip away with Campbell on the mound. And then we came back and, and fought and won in 15 innings and then won on Sunday and got out of there. I started realizing that we had a pretty good team and they were really, they were really determined. Felt like they were tough. And I told them, uh, I'm going to kind of get out of your way a little bit. We're just going to keep working. I'm going to let you guys run with this. And, and they've done a tremendous job. So uh, regional. We played well in the regional, the super regional. Had to run into, wouldn't you know it, another SEC school for the second year in a row. Like Tim said, you play the league enough during the season and then you play them in the conference tournament. We played Old Miss eight times this year. Uh, last year, we had to go through South Carolina. We played them seven times, you know, play them a game in the tournament. We played Old Miss twice in the SEC tournament. They were the only team to win a series in Fayetteville this year. They've had our number for four or five years. Uh, we split with them in the tournament, but they actually eliminated us in the SEC tournament. Uh, but once you get to that point, it, it, it's, to, it's, it's do or die. And I thought our players uh, responded well and, and uh, put together two good ball games with one not very good one in between. And, and just really, really excited to bring this team back up here. Okay, we'll open it up for questions. Uh, I see Mike back here in the back wants a mic. Suzanne's coming up. Suzanne's coming. Mike, hold on. Uh, Mike Lopresti, instillblade.com. This is for Dave. Baseball is a game that demands pretty much that you let go of tough nights and move on because everyone has them. That said, how hard was it you, for you personally to let go of how this tournament ended last year? And did that put a fire into the kids who were coming back, who were still on the team who played last year, put a fire into them that burns to this very day? Man, you nailed that first question right out, didn't you? You just, <laughs> bingo. <laughs> uh, I mean, it is what it is, baseball, 27 outs. You got to get 27. And we had a good team last year. We fought hard. We were an old team last year. Uh, it was a different team than this team. but. Um, you know, you, you got to let it go. You, you got to let it go. You know, you go to you go to go out and recruit. You start fall baseball, and never talk to this team one time about that play. You know, it is what it is. I've only watched it two or three times. Once was enough, honestly. But uh, you know, it was a great season last year. Won a lot of games. Sent a lot of guys out. A lot of guys signed. But this is a different team. Um, this team, you know. I just tell them all the time, this is your team. It's, it's not about last year. They're going to come, you know, when we started playing well, then we started getting compared to last year's team. Then people would tell me this team's better than last year's team. And I just tell them, just go out and, you know, write your own story. And, and they've been doing it. So I don't really, really know what question you asked me after you start talking about it, to be honest <laughs> with you. But uh, we're here. Last year was last year. Same field, different players. Okay, right here. Uh, Steve Kornacki, mgoblue.com. For Eric, uh, talk about what Ben Kaiser, Ben Kaiser's development this year, particularly what he did at UCLA where he got those big outs for you when you had to get those big outs. Yeah, so Ben Kaiser is uh, one of our captains, tremendous leader, just one of those guys that upholds the standards of the program on a daily basis. He, if, he, you know, if there's a, a guy that is going to police the team, it's going to be Ben Kaiser. And so, you know, UCLA is the, one of the best teams we've seen in years. I mean, the, there was no holes in that lineup, you know, one through nine. They had a, you know, first rounder last year hitting in the nine hole. Uh, but just the, the best team we've seen in a long, long time. And statistically, they hit 100 to 150 points higher against left-handed pitching up and down the lineup, it seemed like. So it was a rever reverse split to put a left-hander into the game. But that's how much we trusted Ben Kaiser's makeup. And we just thought, if the game's on the line, we're going to go with makeup right here, and we're going to put Ben Kaiser in. 
and uh, he was excellent. It's the best two innings he's thrown all year, so I was really proud to see him on the bottom of that dog pile. Before we go any further, if Eric Olson is in here, I'll ask the question. Can you give us our, your starting pitchers for your games tomorrow? Carl Kaufman. Mike Dallas. Drew Parrish. Isaiah Campbell. Okay. And we have yeah. Eric Olson with the Associated <laughs> Press. Thanks for doing my work. Is that it? Okay. <laughs> Bob Holt. If it's okay, I had a, a, a two questions. One, one for, for Coach Martin and for, for Coach Tadlock. For, first, Coach Martin, uh, if you could kind of give a scouting report on Drew Parrish, what, what kind of season he's had. And, uh, Tim, if you could uh, – uh, I'm not – as far as I know, I'm not in relation to Gabe Holt, but I was wondering how, how he's doing and is he expected to play tomorrow? Drew started off very slow for him. He had a very good year last year. Uh, he's a young man that has a fastball in the low 90s, a very good curveball and a very good changeup. He mixes the pitches very well. He feels his position well. He is a complete pitcher, and we're, we're very fortunate to have him on our team. Uh, I don't know if you're related to Gabe either. You from Georgia? Okay. Uh, are you fast? Uh, so you need to be one of those two things, probably being his family. So um, we, it's day to day with Gabe. Uh, he's as tough a kid as it comes. Um, he's, he's got a contraption to get his thumb in his glove. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all, all tomorrow morning. He says he's playing. If he says he's playing, he's hitting lead off. So there you go. These lights are real bright. We can't see. Okay, Suzanne. Kyle Malls on for the Northwoods League. This one's for Dave. Dave, you kind of touched on it um, earlier. Jacob Nesbitt, he came last year when you guys were making your run, he went to go play in Bismarck. Um, now this year he comes over, he got that at bats. Now he comes over, he's a key piece for your lineup. Can you kind of talk to me about his decision last year to go play in the Northwoods League and his progression this year? Well, you know, we helped him get set up in Northwoods League during the fall of his freshman year. Decided to redshirt him. You know, we had a veteran team. Didn't feel like that we wanted – he wasn't going to get to play enough there to waste a year, honestly. And uh, he needed to get stronger. He needed at bats. Uh, he went out there. You know, once we, uh, once we finished up with our finals in May of 2018, you know, a lot of guys left, and he was one of them. And he sees us go through the regional and the super regional, and he's, you know – all the way to Omaha for a couple of weeks, and he's up there playing ball. Played, pretty much played shortstop all summer, and I don't know, he got 150, 200 at bats, and he came back in the, in, in, in the fall this year, and he was a lot better player. And, you know, we had lost, you know, a lot of people. And I played him at second, I played him at short, I played him at third, and, because I didn't know, honestly, if he's even gonna make the team after last summer. And he came back and not only make the team, he's starting. It's a pretty good story. I mean, here he is, a kid that couldn't even travel up here with last year. We send him out. He comes back, battles, and been the starting third base for just about all year. He's made four errors all year at third base, which is incredible. Um, and he's gotten a lot of clutch hits. Batting average isn't what maybe you want it to be, but he's driven in over 40 runs. So he's got some big hits for us. Hi, my name is Jocelyn Stamp, and I work for Sports Illustrated Kids, and this is for Coach Martin. Coach Martin, this is your 17th time at CWS. What advice do you have for coaches who want a track record like you? What's your secret? That a girl, Jocelyn. It's uh, one of those situations where guys have to go out and work hard, and that's what all of us try to get across to our players. Uh, Dave just mentioned about a young man going to the summer league. That's extremely important to all of us because that's how a young man gets opportunities. He comes back. He's a different player because he's competing against players from all over the country and it makes them better. And that's one of the prerequisites, you might say, 
for that young man to have when he comes back. He knows I can play with these guys. Coach Martin, Wayne McGahee, Tallahassee Democrat. Um, you were here two years ago, but there's only a handful of players left from that team. How do you prepare your guys for this environment with the stakes that are uh, that come with it? I think the big thing is there are no freshmen on our team now. They've played, gosh, 60 ball games, so no excuses in that area. I think the Preparation is done, as I mentioned, with what has transpired with our team, the way they came together. But you just you just don't know what's going to happen. You just want to go out there and be prepared on a daily basis. And I think that's what our guys need to understand when we play. Just be prepared, understand the nuances of the other team and be prepared for it. Okay. Alyssa Orange, Ken W. A. in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Uh, my question is for Coach Martin. And Coach Van Horn alluded to the 2004 and 2009 Super Regionals. What do you remember about those two meetings previously with Arkansas? How you do the P? That way you <laughs> we can work on it later. <laughs> He said we can work on it later. <laughs> it's it's uh, it was really uh, an eye-opening experience when we went down there in in '04. Uh, the fans are just tremendous. The facilities are outstanding. Uh, it was a let's see what you got situation, and they showed us what we got. They outplayed us. They deserved to win. And they advanced. In 09, I remember a misplayed fly ball that we had. And they took full advantage of it and again came out on top. I look at that as a program that is at the top in college baseball. They, they don't beat themselves. There were a couple of times that the Florida State team did not do what they were supposed to do, and they deserved to get beat. But I hope. No, I don't have to say that. I ain't going back down there again. <laughs> okay. Sam McDowell with the Kansas City Star. This is for uh, for Coach Van Horn. Uh, talking with Isaiah, he attributed a lot of his development just to improving in the thinking part of the game, the analytical part of the game. Where have you seen his development grow in his time at Arkansas in that aspect? Well, you know, last year, Isaiah was our number three pitcher. Our number, our number one went 14-0, and 0, uh, was drafted pretty good. Our number two is a left-hander, pitched real good all year. We didn't score a lot of runs from him. I don't remember his record. And, and then there was Isaiah. Once the season ended here, um, he had an opportunity to sign a professional contract and make some money. And his family and him sat down and talked about it, and they came to us and said, I'm coming back. And once season ended, he knew he was our number one pitcher. And he didn't go home all summer. He stayed and worked. He got himself in great physical condition, and he just led everybody when they got here as far as the pitching staff. Um, I've seen such development in him mentally when – runners were in scoring position. The first couple years here, if they got runners on, those guys are more than likely going to score. Now he fights through, it doesn't bother him. And just that part of it is, was amazing. You know, the analytical part, he's worked with Coach Johnson and Coach Hobbs. Uh, you know, we're talking everything, spin rate, this, that, you name it. And he's into that. He's very smart. He's already got his degree. Um, and you can't outwork him. Uh, but but the, the mental part of his game, the physical stuff was there. Once he started thinking, hey, I'm the man, I got to be the man, he became the man. And he's done a tremendous job for us this year. What we got? Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, question for Coach Martin. This is uh, Mike Malloy with the Orlando Sentinel. Um, you mentioned earlier uh, a team meeting that. Um, 
change the course of this season with your players. Do you remember when that was and who were some of the leaders that, that called that meeting? I'm sure that it was Mendoza, but nobody's so-called taking credit for it. Mendoza from Mineola, and Drew is uh, uh, our captain. He's a young man that uh, has a very good future in this game, and I think he just saw that there was a need for something to transpire, and he took the bull by the horns. The nice thing about it is the entire team looks up to him. It wasn't somebody that, you know, some of the guys were just not really sold out to, like any other team. Mendoza's a guy that they're all sold out to. The way he plays, the way he conducts himself on and off the field, a great leader. Okay. Anthony Fennick, Detroit Free Press, questions for Eric. Eric, what's kind of going through your head sitting up there with these guys, and what has this experience been like the, the last two days here in Omaha? Um, waiting to hear what Coach Martin says next is really what's going through my head. Uh, <laughs> I just taking in taking in the nuggets like like always. Um, no, I just you know just super excited to be here. Obviously, I mean, this is uncharted territory for our program for the Big Ten. So, you know, just uh, set out this year to you know have team 153 of Michigan baseball history be a team that's bookmarked in the Michigan baseball history book and. In that amount of time, we're the eighth team to advance this far. So, you know, we just want to stay loose and stay confident and uh, continue to play well. Over here. Hold on, Bob. Howard no. Borden, Omaha, KOBM. First of all, uh, congratulations, coaches, for getting back to Omaha. Question for all of you. Um, I asked a question this morning. The park sometimes can play big. Uh, thoughts on your defense overall uh, as it developed during the spring and uh, arm strength from the outfielders as far as, you know, you know, firing the ball back in either to cut off or plays at the plate. Eric, you start, please. Well, we played five games here just three weeks ago, and, you know, it really depends on which way the wind's blowing. So uh, if it's blowing in, the outfield can really shallow up, especially, in, you know, depending on which direction. Uh, but it is a big park, and, you know, it's a, the, the way the backdrop is with so many people and a huge stadium, so hitting the cutoff man is really important, and loud, convicted communication is really important. Uh, but, yeah, fundamental defense is something that I think all of us preach, and, uh, it's, you know, this time of year, pitching and defense and timely hitting are going to be huge storylines. Tim? Um, our defense really came together back about probably – Six weeks ago, we moved our third baseman to shortstop and really solidified some things fundamentally and uh, really solidified just the communication within our infield. And uh, that's been really good for us. As far as outfield throwing goes, I mean, those guys are out there to drive runs in most of the time and catch the ball when it's in the air. So if we throw somebody out at the plate, it'll be a surprise to me. <laughs> Mike? I got to tell you a quick story. He calls me about two years ago and says, you got a couple of games? Yeah, I, I, I got two days. You want to come on it? I said, I, I, I don't have any guaranteed money. He said, oh, that's okay. We'll be down there two, next week, okay? Okay. So he comes in and kicks our butt. He ain't never going to get another phone call. <laughs> anyway, all right. He was supposed to play golf, too. <laughs> That can be arranged. There you go. There you go. I figured you'd be flaunting a master shirt today, but our outfield defense has uh, been pretty darn good all year long. Uh, our center fielder was a fourth rounder as a pitcher, but he's also a very good two way player. Our right fielder, Reese Albert, is a very good right fielder. Our ballpark doesn't give our young men the opportunity to, to show how much ground they can cover because, as you well know, it's not a whole lot of yardage out there in right field. 
left field, we have a young man that's, that you may have read about, Tim Becker. He's been playing very, very good defense for us, has a very good throwing arm. Okay, Dave. What about the infield? I'm trying to get some more information. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what we're doing. We're giving scatter. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, I'm just kidding. Let's start with our outfield. Uh, we have a really good center fielder, uh, Dominic Fletcher. He's been starting center field since he was a, a freshman. Um, you know, he's a guy, if you run him in the 60-yard dash, not going to light you up. But as far as his, his, his routes, his reads, his jumps, whatever you want to call it, they're incredible. It's probably the best center fielder I've ever had, and I've had some really good ones. Um, I'm not sure what round he went into, sandwich pick or whatever this year. Brother plays second base for the Angels. Uh, we used to give Dom a hard time when his brother was in the minor leagues, you know, just kind of kid him. You know, around the batting cage, say you'll never be as good as your brother. And then all of a sudden, his brother got called up to the big leagues, and we started feeling bad about it. <laughs> so, but uh, Dom's pretty good. Uh, right fielder's kind of a more of a hitter, big left-handed hitter. But uh, our, our field's a little shorter and right, and does a good job out there. And the left fielder's a freshman, um, hits in the nine hole, and it's more about his defense than the offense uh, at this time. Uh, they all throw all right. Infield's been solid. Um, you know, if you look at Casey Martin, our shortstop, he's made some errors, but he's made some plays that I don't know if anybody else can make them. Got the quickest feet I've ever coached. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, but he's, uh, he's made some great plays, and, and uh, you know, I'm just I'm, I'm glad he's with us. And then the other three guys, their field percentage is very high. They've done a great job. Really like our catcher defensively. He's kind of the kind of the glue that holds it all together. Big time leader. Um, he's the youngest of three boys. One of them signed out of high school. One of them signed professional out of after three years. And then he came up, and uh, he's about as tough as they get because they beat on him forever. And uh, he knows he knows the game. He's really smart. And uh, so you know the defense has had some really good days this past weekend. We didn't make an error in three games. Made a couple mental errors out there, but on the scoreboard, we, we, we played pretty clean. Uh, we played pretty good defense down the stretch. You're saying Holt? Okay, this is for Coach Martin. I mean, you, you knocked off Georgia, you, you knocked off LSU. Now you got to play another SEC team. Just wondering how, how you feel about that, given your, your success in the tournament so far against SEC teams. If I was coming back, to Florida State, I dropped the University of Florida. <laughs> that deserves more than that. You try to drop Florida, they run you so far out of Tallahassee, it ain't funny. But anyway, they've beaten us like a drum for a few years. The Southeastern Conference is obviously a very strong conference in, in all sports. We just happened to have a weekend at the University of Georgia in which everything went our way. When we went to LSU, we just seemed to get the hits when we needed to get them. We got outstanding pitching from Drew and C.J. Van Eyck. It was just one of those weekends that you will always remember because there were some things that happened that you just don't expect to happen. But I was very, very pleased with the approach that our guys took at the plate. And I was obviously elated after the game was over because we were able to know we were coming back out here. OK, you got Suzanne. Tom Malzahn from the Northwoods League. Dave, uh, can you kind of just talk about uh, Jacob Kostyshak and what he's meant for your guys' bullpen? Because he's pitched 10. Er 10 innings this year, and he's only given up one earned run. So can you kind of just talk to me what he's meant for the team? Well, obviously, what you just said, he's been really consistent when we put him out there. And, you know, there was a few weeks in there we had some arm soreness, so we really took care of him. I think we, we didn't pitch him for three weeks. Um, and then what we did is one inning here, one inning there. He threw two innings on Monday, uh, really threw the ball well. That was good to see. Um, throws hard, got a good slider, developed a good changeup. Um, and another guy, this is another guy that he didn't get to pitch last year. You know, he had to, he had to sit and watch. Went out to summer ball and did a pretty good job and uh, made a little bit of a name for himself. Came back in the fall. It looked like he was going to be a guy that we could use at the back of the bullpen. 
or maybe even start a little bit. But, uh, uh, you know, he's been big for us there, whether he's closing the game or just kind of bridging it till we can get to our closer. Okay, Mike. Hi, this is for Eric, Tim, and Dave. Given the demands of your profession, can you imagine coaching baseball at the age of 75? And if you can't win this, <laughs> will a little piece of you kind of like to see Florida State win it? Would you? A uh, real small piece. Uh, <laughs> yeah. about that one? I won't be coaching baseball when I'm 75. I'll be watching it. And uh, I mean, that's, that's amazing to me for someone to stay at one university as long as he's been. I, I, don't, I think those days are gone. Uh, it's, it's at this level now to keep people happy. Um, he's done a tremendous job. Um, I think the key, he's, he's, got, he's always had great coaches and good people around him, a lot of support. Um, but I, 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 won't, I won't be coaching baseball when I'm 75. I hope I'm alive at 75. <laughs> yes, sir. Tim. Golly, I don't even know where I'm going next week, much less at 75. Um, I'll agree with Dave, a very small piece as far as on the winning deal. I mean, it, all of us are competitors, and uh, believe me, if we weren't here, yeah, absolutely. There was a time where absolutely you're thinking about it being 11's last year, and you're going, until you qualify, you're going, boy, it would be really cool if he could win this deal. And then you qualify, and you're like, no, that wouldn't be cool. <laughs> um, so... Um, yeah, and as far as uh, I mean, I'll just say this. I mean, what a what a neat run he's had. It's uh, it's been really, really fun to watch. Um, you know, you're talking about 40 years, I believe. And uh, I mean, that's I think that started when I was 10 years old. So I I've seen a big piece of it, and been a big college baseball fan that whole ride. And uh, for, for a guy to get into the game 40 years ago and to leave it better than he found it, uh, it's, it's something I think we all aspire to do. Eric? I don't know if I can add anything to those guys. Uh, Coach Martin's been coaching as long as I've been alive. And I, I just I have so much respect for him. I, I've, I've told him a couple of times now. You know, I've asked him that, that question that every young coach asks the, the old wise coach, you know, what – you know, what advice would you have to have half the career that you've had? So I, I sure hope so. I, that's, you know, 34 years from now, and I, I sure hope that's the case. But uh, what an amazing career, a, a remarkable career, and be, to be able to do it with his son, couldn't think of anything better. So, uh, yeah, I think every single coach in the country was, was pulling for Coach Martin to get here, and I agree with these guys. Now that we're all here, if we have to face him, we're not going to be feeling the same way, but uh, certainly uh, everybody's so happy he is here. Okay, Lou. Yeah, Lou Pavlovich, Collegiate Baseball. Uh, this is for Eric. Uh, uh, there's now a 20-year streak of the number one seed over on the tournament not winning this, and you just knocked off UCLA to keep the streak alive. And how has this happened? And I wonder if everybody could comment on that. I've never seen anything like this. Well, it's... It's, uh, it's baseball, and UCLA was the best team that we've seen, personally I've seen in a number of years, the most complete team, dominant pitching. They give you nothing. They don't walk you. They don't make errors. A lineup that was absolutely stacked. I mean, Coach Savage is one of the very best in the business, and what the team they assembled was a historic Pac-12 team. Uh, we were on the other side of that when, in 2007 when I was an assistant at Vanderbilt and had five first rounders and four major leaguers on the field. And just sometimes it just doesn't go your way in a weekend. And it's, it's baseball. OK. Mike, once again. Another question for Coach Martin. Can you, you talk about uh, Salvatore and, and how much he's improved this season? That's a, that, that's a great question, because that young man it really has improved drastically from one year to the next. He's a guy that uh, you look out there and, and, and you're not really impressed with him, 
until you see him play 10 or 15 games in a row. He's very consistent. He's very much of a team guy. He's not a guy that falls in love with himself. If he hits a home run, he's, he's going to be Sadahara O the next day B. He just gets up there and d takes the same approach that he had when he got the home run. If he gets a base hit, fine. But he's a guy that I really think that one day he's going to play in the big leagues. I'm not saying he's going to be an Alex Rodriguez, but I'm telling you he's, he's that kind of player. He, he's a manager's player because if the ball is hit, you feel comfortable that it's going to him. Any more questions? This group, Bob? Oh, we'll go back here first. Matt Jones, Arkansas Democrat. Is that for Tim and Dave? You both have talked about coming up to the JUCO ranks in Texas. I wonder what did that teach you guys about being a head coach? What are some of your memories about those days? Go ahead, Dave. Okay, I'm older. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what it taught me. It taught me that uh, if you wanted the field to look right, you had to drag it yourself. Uh, you're going to recruit in your own car. You're going to spend your own money. And you're working to get where we're sitting now, and that's where it started. I think it made me a better coach. Um, and I think, you know, you, you just you either sink or swim because you don't have a lot of help. I mean, we didn't even have a paid assistant. You know, I'm asking guys to volunteer and help me out, you know, that are 22 years old, just out of college, and what can you pay them? Nothing, you know, you can, on your resume, you can say you, you worked at the junior college. So uh, it, it teaches you how to beat the bushes, contact people, talk to people, talk to scouts and kids and parents, and it gets you ready for your next job, um, if that's what you want to do, if you have enough success. So. Um, I, I wouldn't trade those five years coaching junior college for any of them. It's, it, it, it made me a better, better coach, made probably a little bit better person. Tim, it was more like 14 years for me. And, um, you know, it's a time of my life, quite honestly. Um, you know, it teaches you a lot of things. Probably the biggest thing, though, is right off the bat, you got to go look people in the eye and get them to come play for you uh, because you got a baseball field. And you're going to ask them to drag the field. You're going to ask them to mow the field. Uh, you're going to ask them to help you along the way. And um, it, it probably more than anything teaches you, you know, not shy away from going and getting good players wherever you are. Um, we had really good players, whether I was at Hill Junior College or Grayson County Junior College. Um, you know, the, the cool thing is the relationships you build along the way. I mean, I've heard from... This week, literally probably heard from 40 guys that played for me 20 years ago. Uh, those relationships go a long way. It's a little tough when they send pictures of their kid, you know, in a baseball uniform at six, and they go, hey, he's coming to play for you. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> but, you know, everything D Dave talked about there, you know, you're, you're filling water coolers before you leave at six in the morning. Um, you know, you're driving the van. Um, you know, you're getting everybody out of bed if you need to. Uh, just a lot of things along the way. You're driving the van back. I'm not a tobacco chewer, but there was one time coming home from Brenham, Texas. We left at 4 in the morning to play a triple header on a Saturday in the fall. Told them we'd come down there if we could play three one day because we couldn't afford to stay at night. And I'm telling you, three miles outside of Brenham, I had to stop and get a pack of Levi Garrett. I was like, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> Uh, stay awake. So it it teaches you, you know, it, and the people will go play for you. I mean, that's that's the thing too. It's probably the biggest thing. I, there's there's a lot of stories, but I mean, I can remember back when Dave had, I think he had, I think it was Todd Walker, if I'm not mistaken. No, it was uh, this close to getting Todd Walker to yeah. come play for me. Yeah. LSU come out of nowhere, and I yeah. they got him over Texarkana yeah. Junior College. I yeah, and so. <laughs> You know, you're talking about, you know, there's been a lot of good players go through junior college baseball, a lot of good coaches. There's a lot of good coaches right now in junior college baseball. Uh, it's, it's very, um, you don't hear about it. I bet there's not a person in the room that could tell me who won the national championship this year. 
um, maybe a couple actually. Now I look down, <laughs> and so uh, it's it teaches you know it's you get to do it all. I'm pretty sure Coach Martin got to do the same thing back when he first started in Tallahassee. I don't, I don't think that was much different at that time, but um, you know you you live in a dorm, you raise your kids and in the dorm and you're coaching about 300 yards from there, it's pretty cool. Until your wife's had enough of it, I guess I should say. <laughs> okay. Bob. Yeah, I just wanted to ask uh, Tim, what, what kind of season has Br Bryce uh, Bonnet had for you? He's been, he's, uh, he's gradually, um, he's gotten better throughout the whole year. The stuff's been electric. From day one, I can remember his first start. Um, the presence, the mound presence, was off the charts. Not sure he got a lot of people out that day, but we knew from that point on we we're going to keep running back out there. Um, so we did that, and you know we reaped the benefits of it. You know here down the stretch, he threw the ball really well. Uh, Coach Martin, uh, of all the accomplishments. How meaningful has it been to have your son at your side for so many years through so much of it? He's a lot like his mama when it comes to attitude. <laughs> he's, uh, he's an intense competitor. He, he loves a challenge. And Tim and Dave brought up recruiting. He's very, very much involved in the recruiting area. In fact, I would say he has recruited 90, 95% of our guys on the team right now. And he has just been tireless in his efforts. And I look back when I started coaching and it was a lot different. Uh, in fact, when I started coaching, the football coach that lost the coin flip coached the team. <laughs> but it's a lot different now. And Mike has been out there just showing everything that he can show to get people to come in and see what Florida State baseball is all about. And I think as a result of his efforts, we've had uh, a, rec a recruiting class in the top five in three of the last five years. It's fun. I'll say that it's, it's very much. It's really to see him with that smile on his face like we had when we were at LSU is, is priceless. I'll, I'll never forget that as long as I live to, to see your son and think that, uh, heck, Tomorrow's Father's Day. I'm entitled to get emotional. Wait a minute, tomorrow's Saturday, isn't it? <laughs> I'm set. Am I really 75? That's what I hear. <laughs> Don't believe it. I'll play your butt on the golf course, too. I'm a terrible guy. <laughs> it's been challenging sometimes, but overall, I'm a very blessed man to have had my son with me for 22 years. On that note, if there are no more questions, guys, good luck tomorrow, and we'll be back tomorrow. Thanks, Eric.